Welcome to The Storytellers, the radio show and podcast that features those who choose to leave their mark on the world through the art of story. I'm your host, Grace Salmon. I look forward to our time together today. Now, let's meet our storyteller. Barbara Lynn Probst is an award-winning Amazon best-selling author of contemporary women's fiction. She lives on a historic dirt road in New York Hudson's Valley. Her first two novels, Queen of the Owls and The Sound Between Notes have won multiple award, awards. And The Sound Between Notes was selected as a best indie book of 2021. Barbara's joining us today from New York to talk about The Color of Ice, her third novel. Barbara, welcome. Oh, thank you so much, Grace. It's great to be here. I wonder, this is not, you're being very prolific. I love that you have books out almost every single year now, and they're so fabulous. But this is not how you began your career. How did you find your way to being a storyteller? Well, first, I have to say that I wrote my first book when I was seven years old. So this is not like, you know, a, a new thing in a way. I've always written in one way or another, you know, and I did a lot of extra, a lot of nonfiction writing too. But, you know, I've thought about it, this in relation to the title of your this storytellers. Everything I've done has been about stories in a way. For example, when I was a qualitative researcher, I talked to people about their experience of living with a mental illness label and how that story of who they were affected them. And I did therapy to change the story people were telling themselves, or maybe others were telling them about who they were. So, I mean, and I've done a lot of things. I've been a professor. I've been as I said, a therapist. I ran a not-for-profit for, for out-of-the-box kids because I am one. <laughs> and, um, you know, lo lots of different things over the years. And I've been privileged to be able to follow my passions wherever they led. I love that because one of the things in the storytellers I also try to do and in my other show Launchpad is I like building commonalities between individuals because we are so much more alike than we are different. And like you, I'm new to being a novelist, but I've written three other books prior to that, but every single one research based totally, totally immersed in story. So you've been a storyteller since seven. What was your first book about? <laughs> It was called At Home With Us, about two sisters and their friends playing. <laughs> but, you know, but I also want to say it's interesting this, what you say about the commonalities, because like I feel that a good book, a good novel, there's something unique or different or interesting about it. Like in this case, you know, glass blowing in Iceland, but it doesn't work for me as a reader or writer, unless somehow something very universal about what it means to be human is, is embedded in this, in whatever the specifics are, you, you know? So I think Absolutely. we are totally, like you can, like somebody, you don't have to be a glass blower to, to feel the questions, the search, the, the opening, the, the discover, you know? Yeah. Well, I read one of your reviews and it says each of your books, and I've dived into each of them, but they, it, they were described as filled with passion, vulnerability, and risk. Talk about that. Uh, you know, I, I saw that that was the title you'd pick, so it was kind of going in my head. And I was thinking about that, that they go together. They're not three separate things, because if you have a passion for something and you give it or you go there, Right away, you're taking a risk, which makes you vulnerable. Um, if you're in control, because you don't want to be vulnerable, then your fire is dimmed. And it, actually, that is exactly what the story is of Catherine in, in The Color of Ice, because she had been somebody who's very controlled, and, and her fire was dim. And she learns to take a chance to be exposed, to be vulnerable. And that's actually a th common in all of my books, that same journey. And probably there's something deeply Freudian about all of that, like why? <laughs> but, you but know, but I mean, I think it's what interests me. You know, well, that, 
Yeah, and it ahead. comes and it comes through in your writing, Barbara, which is so rich and l lyrical. I would have described it as lyrical myself, but almost every reviewer says something about that, which is made me go to your second book, The Sound Between Notes. I was fascinated by the quote you chose to open the book, and it said, "Do not take up music unless you would die rather than not do so." <laughs> There's that passion. Do you feel that way about your writing? Um, well, you know, I've done so many things that I know I would be, and I've been a survivor, so it's a little bit different, but while I'm doing it, I give 200%. I, I would put it more like, like that because you don't know something may, ch may come up in your life that puts you in another direction. You know, this was Nadia Boulanger, who is one of the most incredible the quote is a very incredible pianist and piano teacher. And she said this to her students because she didn't want them to go into this half halfway, you know, and, and in a way it's a sort of evocation of a feeling, not, not a literal. And maybe that's what you were asking me too. But, um, you know, if you don't give your all, again, if you play it safe as a writer, see, that's the same thing. Um, I'm not trying to follow some formula or imitate somebody that I think is like, you know, the number one New York, whatever, whatever, you know, I'm really trying to, to be the vehicle for my character's story and to do it, to do right by my characters. Tell us about the color of ice and your characters. Mm, <laughs> well, um, the color of ice is the, as a title is, uh, comes because there's um, an iceberg lagoon in, in Iceland, which I saw, which has these incredible turquoise ice cubes. Now, the, I'm going to take an aside. I'm not a linear speaker here, but there, <laughs> you don't care, right? So, You're fabulous. No, 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 I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to take segues and little side paths. Anyway, when I went to Iceland, I had no idea of ever writing a book set there. You know, it, it was not why I went. I was just a tourist. And what happened with the story of this, this book, rather than telling you the plot, I'm going to tell you the story of the story, how it came to be born. So I had finished all my edits and stuff or whatever for Queen of the Owls, and I wanted to do something wild that I had never done. So there's a glass blowing place near me and then a town, a town over, oh, my glasses are crooked, um, that I thought I was going to take a glass blowing lesson. What the heck? And it was very cool. And there was something about, there were many things about, about it. One is that the glass is formed on this rod called the punty rod. Mm -hmm. And when you're done, you have to break it off, literally knock it off so it can cool. And if you don't liberate it from its, from the thing where it was formed, it will, not survive because it will shatter. So to exist in its beauty, it has to be freed from the very thing that gave it life, sort of like, you know, an um umbilical cord. Them. Yeah. Anyway, but it gave me this, I, I had this sudden flash that that's a story. Somebody who has to break free or abandon or loses the very thing that enabled her to find her form, her beauty, her joy, right? So that, whoa, and it came from the glass. So then I'm, we, I'm leaving this little studio and I'm looking around the store they have. And I and I said, do you have anything? I don't know what I said, I can't remember exactly, but I suddenly thought of those blue icebergs. Mm -hmm. I said, could you do like, if people try to do like blue glass that looks like this color? And she said, sure, and she showed me. And I started thinking icebergs, glass, you know? I don't know why the two came together. And that's how the story began for you. Yeah. And I thought, well, what if somebody, what if, there's always that what if, right? What if somebody wanted to convey this extraordinarily uh, otherworldly blue icebergs in glass? They kind of looked similar to me. Could you do that? How would you do that? And um, so that became this character, Mac, who is not the protagonist, protagonist is the woman, the one that was controlled. Catherine. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so somehow it was these chance 
day at this glass blowing studio. And I don't know why Iceland popped in my head, but that's how it always is for me that stuff in my stuff just sort of finds its each other through the subconsciousness, I think, and somehow something new appears. If I don't have a passionate idea, I can't write. I agree. I agree. So tell us a little bit more about the book itself. Well, um, so the protagonist, Catherine, has a freelance job. Um, she decides to go and do this in person, to go visit this guy in Iceland to do this. It's, it's, a, it's just a freelance gig that she has as a um, sort of graphic uh, photographer, you know, for commercial stuff. And she has, so she says, okay, well, I'll make a little trip. And she plans out this very precise itinerary. And so when she meets the glass blower, little by little throughout the book, she deviates or more, more in, in larger and larger ways from her plan. So this idea of giving up my safe way and taking a risk to follow my passion and be vulnerable is externalized quite literally in, oh, I'm not gonna go to that thing I booked. I'll go do this and I'll watch him in his studio instead. Oh, I'll turn around. Oh, I'll extend my visit. Oh, I'll say the hell with my return ticket. You know, it's literally mapped out in her physical, the choices in, in her journey. And I, I don't wanna say more because the, what happens in the last third is very, it, it, it's her, let's just say her discovery of what it really means to love someone, no strings. And it's um, about something becoming generous in a certain way. I, I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> well, don't, don't ruin it. We're all intrigued. One of the things I've read about you over and over again, and this goes to that area of risk, is that you have a lot of, and you've just alluded to it, unpredictable plot twists, and you have some surprise endings. I'd like you to talk about that because my novel, The Eves, has three big plot twists and a very surprising ending. And I've got, although, you know, the readers like have very much responded to that. I got some really interesting critical um, comments on, oh, I don't know about that surprise ending. So talk about why that works for you. It's an interesting question. I think it really has to feel organic not just dramatic to be, oh, gotcha, you know, let's make this cool. But one of the words that was used in several of my blurbs was interesting to me, was seamless. Yes. And and it's that that feeling that, oh my gosh, I didn't see this coming, but yes, it had to be. And so there's something that has to be organic from the psychology of the characters that... Um, that doesn't feel like it's the author trying to be clever. And, and I, I, how that happens is for me, for example, the, the last few incidents in this book, each came to me while I was either walking on my dirt, famous dirt road or like in the shower, when something is loosened up in the mind and I'm not thinking about the book. And I do believe that it's when the subconscious intelligence kind of meets the the cerebral intelligence and, and I go, oh, it just comes and you know. So I think for me, it's very important to have a dance between these two aspects of my um, self. <laughs> and, you know, that's really how it happens. And especially the one thing about the ending, I, re I remember the moment when I was walking on the road and I go, OMG. <laughs> That's a wonderful <laughs> sensation, isn't it? As a writer, you go, this is it. I got it. Go home and write. Yeah. But I mean, I don't plot it all out. I have a general idea of where I'm going. Well, in this case, for example, there's a pivotal scene that I, I had in my mind when she makes a particular choice and does something. And I saw that scene and the whole book was moving toward that. But I didn't really know what would happen afterwards until I got to know my characters better and let it sort of 
tell me. So there's something I have to know where I'm going. I can't just be like making it up. But but there are always uh, opening. It just opens as you're working on it. Does that make sense? Oh, I think it's it's very, very well said. Yeah. Part of what I think so many of us do as authors is an incredible amount of research. I just wrote an article called Down the Rabbit Hole, which was amazingly fun to write because I had to do a lot of research about going down the rabbit hole. Yes. I know for you in each of your books, you do just, you live the moment, you go there. Talk about your research process, please. Well, yeah. I mean, I'll start by talking about Queen of the Owls because that was framed around the art and life of Georgia O'Keeffe. These crooked glasses are making me crazy. Um, so I literally went to the places where O'Keeffe lived and worked. And I went to see her paintings in person because you have to. And um, I even had like this one uh, black iris, which was the um, genesis of that book, actually. I'd only seen pictures in... in um, you know, in like a book and art books. And it, I knew it was housed in New York City in the Met. And anyone can get a private viewing of a painting if you ask. I mean, it's a public institution. So I had a viewing, just me and this O'Keeffe painting alone in a little room. It was so incredible. And I understood it in a way I wouldn't have just by reading and looking at art books. And the same thing with, um, I'll just use that book as an example because it was very, did a lot. That book is framed around the idea that George O'Keefe went to Hawaii for a while, which people don't know, well, and that it was um, a place of renewal and rebirth for her. She was stuck and her, her, her work was stuck, her marriage was stuck, blah, blah, blah. And I went to Hawaii, you know, the things we do that just, you know, right. It was, <laughs> it was hard, actually, I know. It was actually for a writer's conference. When I went to Hawaii and I felt the kind of heat they have there, heavy, moist, dense heat on your body. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is so different from the heat in New Mexico. No wonder O'Keefe felt different there. And I felt like I had to understand that in my body. With, and I'm just gonna give you a couple of examples from each, but in, um, uh, the sound between the notes, I, I am an amateur pianist, serious amateur, which means that I pay for lessons. That's what, <laughs> but, um, and um, I had, I, the piece she plays, Schubert Sonata, the B flat uh, major sonata, is a bit, is a, as a whole, it, it's too much for me. But I, I said, I had to learn the second movement before the, to write this book. I had to at least learn one of the movements to have the right to and um and I and and to the story with that book is that I had written it before Queen of the Owls, but I pulled it was going to be published. I pulled it. I just wasn't right. And what happened was I had to become a better pianist before I could make Susanna the person she needed to be. She was too snarky. She was too angry. Too brittle. And I realized one day at this piano workshop that you can't play the piano and be angry. You can't play this stuff unless you're full of love, really. So I understood something musically and I was able to go back and change the book. Fabulous. So it's like that. And with Color of Ice, you know, I was determined to see the Northern Lights. Mm -hmm. I'd written about it before I'd actually seen them. And, you know, and I talked to glass blowers and I visited court, you know, yeah, yeah, it's fun. It's fun. And it teaches you, it teaches you stuff. Because again, when I was talking to the glass blowers and they all told me that the glass is molten, it's neither liquid nor solid, it's in movement and you have to stay present. You can't daydream. And you're, and somehow this notion of being always in movement Yes. Helped me understand what Catherine needed to understand, that she couldn't rest in a known form, really. She had to be willing to be molten. 
Barbara, I've so enjoyed our time together. It's people over. Have, people have three great books to, that they can reach back to and learn things and enjoy. And hold up your beautiful new one, Color of Ice. I love it. And before we go, just tell us something that people might not know otherwise about you, something quirky. I haven't been quirky enough yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've lived in a former jail cell, a former sauna, and a former firehouse. Those are all really quirky and wonderful things. Barbara Lynn Propes, thank you for being with us here on The Storytellers. Grace is fun. <laughs> Take care, everybody. That concludes this episode of The Storytellers. I'm so glad you could be part of the story today. I hope you share the stories, tell your own, and come back for another episode. Because when our stories are told, everything changes. I'm Grace Salmon.